Now we are moving to the presentation of Mr. Malinowski uh, uh, from the. Um, Okay, uh, the, that's from the industry perspective, some uh, good practice uh, could be uh, presented. Please, thanks. Thanks, thank you very much. First of all, uh, hello everyone. It's really a pleasure to be part of this event. Uh, we see a lot of interesting uh, topics, and by the way, you know that uh, smart cities are hot topics everywhere, apparently. It's been a topic that has been discussed a lot in the previous years. And it's really nice to see that uh, more and more companies and more and more stakeholders are involved in the process. Uh, by the way, before I continue, I would like to have a little bit more of a feeling about the audience. How many people here are part of, uh, let's say, government, of uh, municipality, institutions? Okay. Two. <laughs> and uh, from the educational, from the science sector? Okay, and from uh, the business sector. Okay, so as I expected, uh, unfortunately in, uh, in Bulgaria we have, uh, on such events we have little presence from actually the, the main bodies that implement and that should actually take care of such systems. Uh, why it's important? Because from one side, uh, the businesses and the science and the educational side, they have to work together and also together with the municipalities and the state uh, agencies to create the so-called strategies for smart cities. We've seen before that there are such initiatives, which is very good. And uh, you know, in order to be really successful, in order to really have just discussion between the business and the education, there should be more presence. But that's it. What can we do? I hope that for the future we have more presence. Why am I here? Maybe I'm here because I would like to share our experience and our uh, knowledge of uh, how what smart city really, really looks like according to ourselves and according to the local uh, to the local environment. Smart cities are there in order to support us, in order to support and, and solve the problems of uh, of cities themselves. Many cities, many problems. So we cannot apply the same formula everywhere. But there are certain things that we believe that can be applied. <coughs> so, I'm sorry that it's a mixture of Bulgarian and English. I, I was uh, actually, I prepared myself to deliver the presentation in Bulgarian, but I see that many, many of you understand uh, English and uh, it's better to have the communication with the colleagues, international colleagues. So that's why you can see a little bit more of uh, Bulgarian language, but that's it. So I'd like us to start with some historical data. That's the data. We're talking about Industry 4, 4 zero, so we have to start with data. So, and the main reason we're here is because of the fact that the population is moving from smaller cities, from the villages to the big cities. And I would like us to track a little bit what has happened in the years. So you can see in the 1960s, around 66% of the people were actually part of, uh, were mainly living in small, in small areas. In the 80s, we can see that the difference is starting to, to, to be um, more getting in the, in the way of cities. And it was the millennium in the year of 2000 when the, there was a, uh, the power sequelized in a way. So starting from there, we can see that more and more people started, the prevalence was mainly in the big cities. So the projection is around 70% of the population to be located in cities by the year 2050. So, coming back to Bulgaria, what do you think this percentage was in the year of 2000? Any opinions? Sorry? 70. Okay, great. We have a very good mark. <laughs> so, why am I bringing this to you? Mainly because you can see that in Bulgaria things happened earlier and uh, this is because of many reasons but this shows us that we have to be more proactive in order to, to become a really smart city because we have to catch up the other big cities on one side. So it's expected that on 2000, in 2016 we can see that this is even growing further. 
So what are the uh, what are the um, challenges? The challenges are quite simple. We have more people living in the cities, and at the same time, we have to give a better service to these people. These people would like they move to the city because they would like to have a better experience. They would like to live better. They come for because of the living standards are better. So this is really a challenge for uh, mayors, for uh, businesses, for everyone to create such a good environment. I have, I believe that we all agree on that. So where is the, where is mainly the, the solution? We believe, talking about smart cities, the solution is in the digitalization. Uh, as we have heard a lot, we have read a lot about the Industry 4.0 in the the main um, in the center of, the, of that is actually the data, and we create knowledge by getting gathering data and analyzing data, and this is actually why and what this is uh, in the also in the incorporated in the solutions of Telelink. So, in order to, I'm going to go quicker on that. We see that picture, but mainly in, uh, in the cities and in the smart city concept, we have many various technologies and systems. We have heard about some, we are going to probably hear about others in a few minutes, in the, in the next hours, but what's important is that we believe that in the center or in the root of every smart city, you should have smart mobility and security. Why is that? It is because you can have the best, just to give an example, you might have the best uh, university in the town, in the, in the whole country, but if you cannot get there, if you, can, if you don't have the right transport, if you don't feel safe, or have the best hospital, this is really in the, in the basics. So that's why we believe that every smart city should have really smart mobility and security in order to continue. It's like the, the, uh, the, the pyramid of Muslim. So it's, it's the safety is on the bottom, so it's you cannot build, build on it without having these uh, major systems and factors. So what is uh, really uh, common about uh, cities and the system there is that we have very a lot of systems which have been implemented, which have been there for years, but they are on their own. They are not integrated, they are not integrated, they don't talk to each other. So this is the big challenge right now. I'll show you now what we do and how we, um, what our approach is in finding a solution. In the, like the motto of our uh, smart city division is that we make people enjoy their city. So we create systems that are for the people. And uh, talking about smart mobility, this is uh, uh, this is a screenshot of uh, our solution for uh, automated fare collection. Uh, we believe that uh, people should should be given the uh, <coughs> the freedom to, to, to use the technologies in, in their everyday transport. So we created this uh, app in order to make to empower empower people and their uh, experience within the cities. So. Uh, on, on one of the sites, you can see that uh, with this app, you can plan your um, uh, your trip. And on the other side, it's that you have your phone. Actually, the phone is a million times more uh, uh, protective than it was in 1969 of all NASA equipment. So you have to use that. So on the other side, we have created uh, uh, the option to, to travel by scanning it. You have all your transport uh, <coughs> information and all your transport cards digitally on your phone. So that's one side. On the other side, uh, transport is there and in order to, to be improved, in order to uh, satisfy the needs of people. But to have that, you really have to have the right system and to make the right, to gather the right information and, and to, <coughs> to analyze in the right way. So that's why we have also created this part of the system, of course, is the backend, which is quite important. It is gathering all the information, analyzing, and uh, we are also using uh, Power BI tools in order to, to make the forecast for, for improving the transport. By the way, we presented this solution 
because we are partnering with, with, with Microsoft. We have based it on, uh, on the cloud of Azure and City Next platform. So last uh, 10 days ago, we had our uh, solution presented in the Smart City Barcelona. So we were, we were one of the few to present their solutions there. The other thing about uh, being mo mobile in the, in, the, in the cities is about smart parking, of course. There we have also implemented a solution. We have, uh, a few months ago, we have uh, started the environment. So again, we use the phone. We use that power and uh, processing power and uh, to, to give it to, to empower people to, to be more flexible. City car, this is something very interesting. Uh, currently, we are developing with, uh, some of our partners a solution for a city card. What does it mean? We've seen it uh, in various cities, but we, we are working on a concept where we, uh, I've seen it in the Bianca's presentation, or I think before that, it's just uh, you increase the relationship between the mayor and, and, um, and the people by volunteering, giving information to the mayor who you are, where you work, what your hobbies are, then the mayor and uh, the office can address in an, in an adequate manner uh, the needs of these people. For example, um, you give your information where you work, how you get to work, and uh, in a certain uh, moment there is reconstruction of the road. So one day ahead they send you a message that tomorrow you have to take another course. Or, for example, there is going to be an investment in the city, in the park, so they ask you, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to have some nice culture? What kind? Do you prefer to have some uh, pool or whatever? So it's a, it's a uh, dual communication. So that's very important in order to have really a smart city. Because we, again, we talk about knowledge, and this knowledge is gathered by data. Okay, this is some example of uh, our initial steps of uh, having a city card in the city of Wagner. So, going back to that picture, what do we do? We create systems of records, we put them in systems of intelligence. System of records is that a lot of, currently, a lot of systems that just gather information and nobody is using that information. It just stays, stays somewhere, it's in a, one system, you don't integrate it, you don't use it to predict the future, to make better forecasts to improve the service. What we believe in the, is in the, it's in the, in the, how we integrate is that we use the so-called account-based. Uh, I can tell you more about this account-based. Uh, we have uh, installed our uh, a demo version outside. But maybe account-based uh, solution, what does it mean? It means that you arrived at the uh, hub uh, with your car, you need to car at the parking, then you take the metro or you take a bus. Then the last mile of your trip, you take the scooter, electric scooter, and all this you pay with the so-called account-based solution. This is how you integrate and make the various systems talk to each other. So, so far from uh, smart mobility, just to finish, wrap up with uh, the second, as I told you, we have smart mobility, and the second segment of uh, uh, systems is in the security. This is a pretty much a, quite a common uh, scenario. A lot of uh, cameras, a lot of more interests, and let's say a few people just staring at them. Okay, this is, this is mandatory, but uh, basically the human eye and the human brain cannot uh, be concentrated more than 20, 20 minutes. Again, here big data and analytics kick in, I'm going to show you how. I'm giving you examples with a real um, project. This project we, we made uh, for the Ministry of Interior in Bulgaria. Uh, it's a solution called AWARE. Uh, it has been created uh, after 9-11 in the States. Uh, it was a cooperation between the York Police Department and uh, Microsoft. It was a platform created to improve the security and to add analytics to the uh, to the existing um, solutions in the city. So what does it mean here? For Ministry of Interior, what we did is that uh, on the first phase for the European 
presidency and presidency for the European I forgot the name. Okay, presidency that was a few months ago. Um, uh, the National Palace of Culture where it was held and all the cameras in Sofia also with the with the borders. We integrated all this information into one place, all the so-called video message um, systems, VMS systems, and uh, we integrated them in one place on one side, but as I told you, people have uh, cannot concentrate more than 20 minutes. That's why we, we put the analytics and what does it mean. Uh, for example, if you have a running, running cr uh, crowd during the day, the system learns that this uh, you put it in the perimeter, for example, if you see a running crowd, it should give an alarm. Or if you see a, a body laying down the street again. Of course, the system learns with the time and it improves so-called machine learning. And I'm not talking about something that is, uh, let's say, going to be implemented. No, this is something that's working even right now in, in Sofia. So from this point of view, I might say that uh, there are some parts where we are leading. Not only that we have to follow, but others have to follow us. And this is going to, there's going to be a business case which is going to be quite soon released about that. So this is a live view. I'm, I'm wrapping up, yeah. And we'll skip on that, that's our traffic control solution. And to wrap up, what is the future? Actually, I'm saying that the future is here. Is that more and more we have to think about having all these systems, in, in, even in, in smart city areas and sectors, having them as a service. It doesn't, uh, parties, they don't have to have uh, uh, physically the system, they need the information, they need the data. So, a small municipality is not required to buy all this expensive equipment and to maintain it and so on. So, you can, uh, the companies themselves can offer this and offer the, the information in return. And also to have everything in the in the cloud. So okay, all the we, we we hear a lot about clouds, about the cloud, and but that's that's the future. It's the future in many places, but it's also it, we have to adapt to that. There are many advantages, but then I'll be available after this presentation. I'll be available outside for a talk. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure to share with you our vision. Thanks.